guys can shave their legs too? That's very interesting. Peggy. Bobby. Sorry, Dad. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Harvey McCloud's Coth Corner. I've done like five King of the Hill videos and just now came up with a name for them. In today's installment of episodes that become more relevant as time goes on, we'll be looking at the season four episode, Moving On Up. Admittedly, this is a pretty grounded episode considering this is the season that had some larger-than-life plots. This is the season that had Peggy surviving falling out of a plane, Bill getting his old high school football record back, Bobby taming a raccoon for a pet, the Millennium, Hank almost being framed for murder, Bobby being the reincarnation of a Buddhist god, and an exploding Thanksgiving turkey. And that's just to name a few. Season 4 was one of the best seasons. So this episode has a much smaller scope compared to its peers. You'll notice that the entire plot takes place only in the neighborhood. This episode delves into a situation that I'm sure most of you have had some experience with, bad roommates. I personally think much of this episode is quite mean-spirited, but darn if it doesn't paint an accurate picture. I also think it ends perfectly. We'll get more on that later. The episode starts with the pre credit scene, something of a rarity for this show, involving the elderly neighbor, Pops, mowing his lawn. Huh, look at him, now he's just showboating. Come on, Pops, let's see those hands at ten and two. Uh, Pops? Mr. Papazito. Well, that got freaking dark real quick. And it looks like no time was wasted putting up the house for rent. The guys see this and discuss death. Well, we should all be so lucky. You know how I want to go? Right here in the alley with you guys. Yeah, it'll probably be my heart the way things are going. And before it gets too bleak, Bill suggests the guys all rent the house themselves and turn it into their personal clubhouse. A clubhouse? I don't know, isn't that something you do when you're in your 30s? No, oh, man, come on, Hank, you don't get a little old DVD player, man. They're gonna go, come in and I'll show Jessica Rabbit on it and then come freeze frame and all. You talking about an old fridge full of beer, too, man, you know. <laughs> well, Boomhauer, I tell you, you ought to be in sales. And the idea is quickly picked up and decided on. They even start picking out their nicknames. How about Hank? Hank it is. Rudy. Later on in the evening, Luann comes home from work to a waiting Bobby. Apparently, Bobby has Luann bring home onion loaves from her restaurant job so he can eat them while taking a bath. Since Bobby's hogging the bathroom, Luann decides to try sneaking into Hank and Peggy's bathroom while they're trying to... Get it on. ...and interrupts them. Oh my god! I thought you guys were sleeping. Now, this is strange to me because I wouldn't think Luann would ever have the permission to walk right through Hank and Peggy's room at night, even if they're asleep. Also, if they are already in bed and Luann thought they were asleep, it's probably relatively late at night, so why is Bobby still up waiting for an onion loaf to take a bath? If it's getting late enough at night, he should have just taken the bath already and then eaten the onion loaf later. And Luann could have just waited until Bobby was done with his bath. Okay, nitpicking aside, Luann gets reprimanded by Hank. Why are you guys getting so upset? I didn't see anything. You saw your uncle's nipples. According to Hank, Luann is in violation of the following rules. No water usage after 10 p.m., 9 p.m. curfew on school nights, entering the master bedroom without verbal permission. Hold up, then why isn't Bobby being reprimanded then? He's probably still taking a bath, Hank. And it's a school night! Bobby should be in bed! Also, why is Luann in trouble for being past curfew? She was at work! She doesn't have control over when she's allowed to go home. And you're barefoot in the kitchen! Lady Bird eats off that floor! <laughs> my dad had a rule about wearing socks in the house, too. Weird. God only has ten rules, Uncle Hank. And his house is much bigger. Luann is so pure. So the guys are filling out the rental application for the house, and Dale gives a phony social security number, big shocker, and Hank tells him he's still on the hook for one-fourth of the rent. And I've given it some thought, and I've decided to start charging Luann some rent for living in my den. Now, I don't think Hank is necessarily in the wrong here. Luann was still in high school when the Hills took her in, and now she's an adult going to college with a job. And as later mentioned in the episode, she still has a popular puppet show on public access television. 
Asking for a little bit of money isn't terribly untoward since she's been there for a few years at that point. So the guys see that Khan has potential renters come to check out the house, which does not fly with the guys. I don't know, Khan. I, the house looks nice, but the neighborhood looks a little hillbilly to me. Uh, I don't know how you gathered that. The lawns look well cared for, and the place looks pretty nice. I mean, have you seen how bad Khan's lawn looked in the Redneck episode? But nevertheless, the guys decide to jump on it. I just whooped up a new batch of possum stew I'd be willing to share with you. Don't worry, I took off the feet. What did he just say? Uh, all great chefs doing that now. Wolfgang Puck cut the feet off of everything. Got my own fine life, got my own fiddle. Old sun's coming up, I got grubble, grubble, grubble. Life ain't nothing but a funny, funny, funny riddle. The plan works, and the potential renters walk off. Oh, and Boomhauer wants a nickname. Yo, yeah, man, you talking about that? Everybody had a dang old nickname except me, man. I don't doubt like a dang old odd man out, man. All right, Boomhauer. What do you want to be called? You know, B Dog. So the guys are talking about remodeling the house. I guess rental properties allow that? And they find Pops' last beer in the fridge. The guys hoist it up in his memory, which is quickly done away with when... That son of a bitch had a swimming pool? Huh. I thought I heard splashing. How could you not know? You lived next door to him for 18 years. How could you not know, Hank? It's not like the backyard is completely closed off. I'll show you what I mean later. I thought he lived on a lake. What lake? It was none of my business. Anyway, the realtor comes in and confronts the men for being in the house when they shouldn't have been able to get in, and tells them that the place has already been rented. Luann is revealed to be the new renter, and instead of Hank fighting back, he welcomes Luann to her new home, and the guys are none too pleased. Luann starts packing up, citing, It's not that I want to move, it's just that I hate living here. This is too many rules. Yep, way too many rules. Goodbye. And if I have to pay rent, I'm not gonna sleep in a den and share a bathtub with a 12-year-old boy, okay? I do like Luann's attitude here. If she doesn't like where she's living and she has the means to move out, she should. Sadly for Luann, her naivete gets the better of her. See, this friend of mine who got kicked out of her apartment, she had three roommates who also got kicked out of the apartment. And she said I could have them! If that's not a red flag, I don't know what is. But I should move out before we end up hating each other. Oh, Luann, we could never hate- She's making a good point, Peggy. There is some wisdom to that quote. The next day, Luann is moving into her new home while the guys feel they've been robbed of their own little clubhouse. They scope out the new people moving in and are greeted by another roommate. This is where we assemble. Always has been. Well, always has been Texas Penal Code 49.02, which prohibits public drunkenness. My lease says this is my space. <laughs> no! Uh, hey! Thought so. Man, you'd get your car keyed if you did that here in Dallas. So with Luann gone, Hank finally gets to enjoy his quiet time in his den. It's here that he notices a long extension cord going from his outlet to Luann's house. He confronts the jackass, who is voiced by Andy Dick, and he's told... You know, when it hits 105 degrees and you want to use my pool and drink my soy shakes, I'm gonna remember this. Hank, you should have kicked his ass! He effectively broke into your home and stole from you! Later on, Luann shares her manger baby's puppets with her roommates, and they tell her that they need to go grocery shopping. Luann says she already went grocery shopping, to which her roommates all dash into the kitchen. They're not gonna leave you a scrap. What, what? Well, this should have been red flag number two. Ugh, I've been there, Luann. I've been there. Also, why didn't this lady just go to the grocery store herself? She had a car. Back at Hank's house, Hank is decorating his newly reacquired den when the guys practically invite themselves in. Through the window. And they start talking about the secret knock they can do for entry. No, that's a secret knock at the gun club. I don't want to get confused. Uh, well, no, Dale. If they're the same, you won't get confused at all. Hank confesses that he mostly wanted to rent the house so he could have his own private space since his den was occupied by Luann. And since she's gone, he has his den back. 
Well, now that I've got my den... <clears throat> Our clubhouse? My den. Okay, I get Dale maybe wanting the same thing, but don't Boomhauer and Bill live alone? Why can't they just make their house the clubhouse? Why are they all going to Hank's den? So Luann compiles all of her bills accumulated since the roommates moved in, and they all come up with lame excuses and pretty much blow her off. When Luann stands her ground about needing to pay up, the roommates straight up call her a house Nazi. You're kind of being a house Nazi right now, Luann. Hello, I thought we agreed no smoking in the house. You know who else had anti-smoking laws? Uh, who was it? Oh yeah, Hitler! <coughs> Nazi! Wow, so a bunch of freeloading bums that don't want to pay their fair share or follow the rules just straight up call her a Nazi. This episode is becoming more relevant by the second. And since they ate all of Luann's food, Luann tries to go over to the hills to see if they're still having dinner. Are you hungry? Luann, are you eating? Do you need money? Get my purse. No, 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 no. Such a cute Peggy moment. Even my mom would say that to me when I moved out. Let me fix you a to-go plate. Hey, Luann, what you got there? Nothing, this isn't mine. And Luann is too proud to be seen by Hank accepting help. Now, I don't really understand this either. Hank didn't say Luann was incapable of supporting or feeding herself. He was 100% on board with her moving out and never said she'll come crawling back for help. So Luann not accepting the food as if she didn't want to be seen as a charity case is baffling to me. I still went to my parents' house a lot for food when I lived on my own. They didn't see it as an annoyance. It was nice when I came to visit. But for whatever reason, Peggy understands that Luann is probably hungry, so the Hills go visit Luann at her house and bring some dinner. They're let in by the athlete roommate who just straight up starts shaving on the coffee table. Okay, I get that these roommates are lazy, freeloading slobs, but are they just socially inept too? Do they think it's completely normal to just shave in the living room when there's company over? Heads up, Der Fuhrer is home from work. As she lights another cigarette. Whose turn is it to take the trash out? Don't make me get out the chore wheel. And they can't even take out the trash? I freaking hate these people. Luann sees the Hills have come over and brought over some dinner, but Luann insists that she wants to cook for them. She quickly realizes that all of her food is gone. Where is my macaroni? And the cheese? Where are my steakums? That is it! Who ate all my food? Come forward! I needed a carbo load! Ah! Griffin, eat you! So they steal her food, mooch off her home, and then call her a Nazi when she tells them they're not following the rules. Sadly, Luann seems to still think that they'd take any responsibility. When I think of how many stupid onion knives I had to sell so your people could talk on the phone and eat my cookies, it makes me so... <laughs> uh, uh. We have rules in this house. We all agree to them, people. I'm counting at least... We got 12! 12 violations! Oh... My. God. I have become. You. Oh. I hate myself. <laughs> Luann, you seem to be hating life. Your job sucks, your home life sucks, and your roommates deserve a good smacking. After Luann runs out of the living room crying, the Hills decide to return home, and we get a hilarious line from Hank. She hates herself because she's become Bobby? I mean, what's that all about? Oh, Hank. Peggy persuades Hank to go talk to her since she's run back into Hank's den and won't stop crying. And for all we know, she could be laughing. This is a pretty good Peggy moment. She understands that Hank drove her from the home in the first place and got into this mess. In the den, all of the guys have come to drink with Luann crying right there for some reason. But despite the fact that they're not trying to comfort her, they're pretty chill about it. Hank tries to shoo them away, but not until they wait for their nicknames to be said. Spike, Dash, B-Dog. 
And Hank lays out that while he may be seen as a stick in the mud, it's sometimes necessary. You see, Luann, a lot of good stuff happened in the world when people were like me. Sure, they'll never write a Hollywood musical about a fella who keeps his yard free of debris and pays his bills on time. And the MTV won't put on a video about a man who requires shoes in the kitchen. But it's because of people like us. But I'm not like you! I really wish Hank got to finish this sentence because what he's saying is right. Luann is so scared of being seen as a strict authoritarian, she doesn't understand Hank is keeping things in line by making sure his home is clean and secure and people aren't running amok in his own house. Without someone like Hank, you can get a house run like Luann's. Yes, sometimes his rules can be seen as unnecessary, but it is his home after all. And there seems to be a reason why Luann found comfort in going back to his house, as well as having all of the guys go there. And all the bills, and they mooch my food, and they're always on the phone, and I just can't take it anymore. I can't stand one more day. They're wearing my socks, Uncle Hank! Her socks? So they actually went into her room, opened her drawer, and straight up took and wore her socks? Okay, forget a good smack. These people deserve to be capped. So Luann starts hyperventilating, but Hank tells her to calm down, saying that he never got that worked up when Luann made him upset. Luann was none the wiser that she made Hank mad, but Hank said she did it all the time and that Luann was ten times worse than her roommates. Hank, I'm calling BS on that one. Luann may have let some rules slip by, but from what I've seen in this episode, one of them wasn't even her fault, and Bobby wasn't following the rules about water usage either. As far as going into Hank and Peggy's room, yeah, that's more of a common courtesy, if anything. She should have knocked, but not wearing socks in the kitchen hardly makes her worse than stealing Hank's food, smoking in the house, wearing Hank's clothes, and shaving in the living room. So, no, Hank, Luann isn't worse at all. Anyway, Luann is relieved at the thought of Hank being able to handle the roommates for her, but Hank refuses, stating, I don't want to give you a fish, Luann. I want to teach you how to fish. That way you'll eat forever. Oh, and Dale comes in while wearing a disguise by pretending to be a deaf electrician. Just when Hank is about to say something insightful to get his point across, he's interrupted. I think the fish analogy is a bit of a reach for someone like Luann, but he is trying to make a point that she has to learn to stand on her own two feet at some point. While Hank iterates that his motivation for being okay with Luann moving out was to have his own private space again, the fact that Luann moved out of her own volition and must make the most of her situation isn't lost on Hank. Hank tells her that since his den can no longer be used as his own space, the only real escape he has is taking care of his beloved lawn. When I'm out there mowing, edging, watering, even fertilizing, nothing else matters. Yep, that's what you gotta do, Luann. Find yourself a project. Find your own lawn. I do think Hank's advice is pretty good, but he probably should have worded it better since Luann would be more like to take it literally. So Dale drops his foolproof disguise and tells Luann that Hank's advice is terrible. Dale Grubble, master of a thousand faces. You just met face number two, the deaf electrician. Great Dale moment. Dale tells Luann that her roommates will only understand fear and concocts an overly elaborate scenario in which Luann switches out donor blood with tainted animal blood next time her roommates need a blood transfusion. Yeah, it's very silly. But Luann doesn't want to hurt them, she just wants them to clean the dishes. Oh, well in that case, stack the dishes in the shower. That's the way Nancy gets me to do them. Luann does this and it does little to make her roommates start picking up the slack. Instead of just cleaning the dishes, let alone moving them, the roommate just decides to take a bath in the pool. Good lord, I hate these people! Ugh. Luann venting her frustration and her hatred for her roommates begins to find some comfort in her project in keeping up the pool, and then understands what Hank meant. Back in Hank's den, he seems quite resigned to the fact that the guys aren't going to hang out anywhere else. Truth? Or dare. Dare! <sighs> what happened to standing in the alley? And how did Hank agree to let the guys bring in a tarantula? 
Hank goes outside to get some space and spots Luann keeping up the pool. Okay, wait, judging by the position of the car in relation to Hank's house and the car seen in this scene, how did Hank not know Pops had a pool? You can clearly see there's no fence there. Anyone walking by would have been able to see it, let alone hear splashing if they were nearby. Okay, it's not that big of a deal considering it wasn't a major plot point or anything, but that's not believable in the slightest. Anyway, back to the episode. Guess what? Right this second, the pH balance in this pool is absolutely perfect. So all of the power gets shut off in her home and Hank surmises that Luann didn't pay her bills. But Luann tells Hank she paid the bills and closed the accounts, so if her roommates want to enjoy the amenities, they'll have to pay for them themselves, or hopefully just move out. And then we proceed to have one of my favorite episode endings in the series. You know, if you're ever up late studying for a test and you want a little electricity, I've still got that extension cord. No thanks, Uncle Hank. You taught me how to fish. I like that even Hank isn't that uptight to let Luann enjoy an Alamo beer, even though she's not 21 yet. So we get a nice bonding moment of the two while the camera zooms out and further demonstrates that the pool was easily visible. The end. This episode can be somewhat frustrating for me because I know what Luann is going through. It absolutely infuriates me that people can be such low-life jerks that mooch off of others. People that would rather take a bath in a swimming pool than move the dishes out of the shower. And to know that people like that actually exist makes my head spin. There's a reason why I resolved to never have roommates again, even if it meant having a lower standard of living. If you have had roommates that gave you no problems, consider yourself blessed. I like that this episode focuses more on the neighbor dynamics. As mentioned earlier, the entire episode never leaves Rainy Street. All of the action and drama is centered around the characters, which is a testament to how well-written of a show this is. Luann is a good example of a naive college student that thinks that just because someone moves in with you, they'll follow the rules. It's a hard lesson that one must screen roommates thoroughly before allowing them to move in, and even then, you may not be safe. Such is the growing pains in life. I, for the life of me, cannot understand how roommates can be so inconsiderate. Home is supposed to be one sanctuary where you can let loose and live comfortably, but when you're sharing your space with others that have their own ideas of cleanliness or personal space, you're bound to run into a few hurdles. Then of course you have the type of people that try to shirk financial responsibility and just simply not pay bills, which is even worse. And some of them know how to game the system too, knowing there's a lengthy and often irritating process of getting someone evicted, but that's neither here nor there as far as this episode is concerned. And it seems that Luann's tactic worked, because the roommates are still seen to be living with her in the next season. But in my head canon, I'm just going to pretend that they all got killed by Cotton. Hey, get your hands off me, you Nazi! Who are you calling a Nazi? No! And I also like the moment with Hank when he offers to let her use his electricity to study if needed, demonstrating that he doesn't mind lending a helping hand every once in a while. Hank was never in the mindset to kick Luann out, he was just going to start charging her rent. Also, his character type is a good demonstration that rules and structure can be a good thing. It keeps one's home in order and teaches responsibility, and shouldn't be looked upon as something bad. Luann sees this and freaks out, saying she hates herself. But when she has time to step back and reflect, she thinks about the other advice Hank gives her and decides to find her own escapism in the form of her pool. She resolves that if she has to live in a bad situation, so does everyone else, even at the expense of her own comfort. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Harvey McLeod, and I'm here to make videos for you. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye bye why is it moving back? Oh. Ah! Oh god! I didn't think that through! I didn't think that through! <laughs>